It takes a very confident, intelligent entrepreneur to take on the sharks and the shark tank. It's not easy to convince some of the most successful business people in the world to invest in your company. But the following entrepreneurs definitely had what it takes, whether it's their confidence, their passion, or their clear vision of the future. Here are the best Shark Tank pitches of all time. Beatbox Beverages Co-founders of Beatbox Beverages, Brad Schultz, Amy Stedman, and Justin Fenchel pitched the Sharks a pretty unique product. The product was basically a wine juice box targeted to millennials. The founders were asking for $250,000 for just 10% of their company. All of the sharks were immediately interested. However, it was Mark Cuban who saw the most potential and began envisioning social media viral marketing. He began the bidding at $600,000 for a third of the company. Without missing a beat, Fenchel thanked the shark for his offer and said that the three weren't prepared to give up so much of their company. He immediately countered with $1 million for a third of the company. Mark accepted the counter and they shook hands. The founders of Beatbox Beverages never lost their cool and stayed steady under pressure, leaving with a great deal. Lumio The founder of Lumio, Max Gunawan, believed that his folding lamp idea could be huge. He was so confident, well-spoken, and concise that the sharks began fighting with each other over who would make a deal with Gunawan. Gunawan had explained that he had basically lived in a factory in China for two years to manage the production and make sure that they were up to his standards. Gunawan was very clear about how an investor could come in and use their resources to help him keep up with the high demand for his product. He had grown the business to achieve a $1 million profit in just two years. Ultimately, it was Robert Hershevec who offered the best deal. Gunawan walked away with $350,000 for 10% equity. 1031 Productions Melissa Carbone didn't walk into the tank alone. No, she was accompanied by a cast of ghouls and ghosts plucked straight from her production company, 1031. Melissa puts on scary events in and around Los Angeles using live actors. More impressive than the gimmicky entrance were Melissa's numbers, which quickly had the sharks taking notice. Melissa was poised and had all of her information down and ready to share. The sharks were blown away when they heard that she is able to make $1 million a night during the Halloween season. Mark Cuban just about jumped out of his seat to make a deal with Melissa. He offered $2 million for a 20% stake and made the best deal of his career. Amazing Lights As a man entered the tank with a giant cartoon head propped up on his shoulders, the audience wasn't sure what it was about to see. Founder and CEO Brian Lim put on a light show using his product gloves with LED lights in the fingertips that have grown popular at raves. During the four years his company had existed, he had been able to earn $7 million in annual revenue. Brian tried very hard to convince the Sharks that the growth of his company was 100% due to his passion, focus, and hard work. He was able to convince the Sharks going as far as having Robert tell him he was one of the, if not the, best entrepreneur we've had here. Lim ended up making a deal with Mark and Damon for $650,000, giving Mark 5% of the company and giving Damon licensing rights and a 20% commission. Mission Belt Company One of the best salespeople to ever appear on Shark Tank has to be Nate Hoffelsell, the founder of Mission Belt Company. While his product wasn't that revolutionary, it's, well, a belt with no holes, his vision and passion were what made the Sharks take notice. Nate said that for every belt they sell, they donate money to a Kiva micro lending fund. He told the Sharks that they wouldn't need to spend money on a task force because they have him. Damon liked the product, but loved Nate. He loved him so much that he made an offer of $50,000 for 37.5% of the company. The deal would only be good if Nate promised to remain the brand ambassador, which Nate happily agreed to. Bantam Bagels Imagine having so much faith in your product that you would leave a high-paying Wall Street job to follow your dream. Well, that's just what husband and wife team Nick and Elise Oleksik did when they created Bantam Bagels. Bantam Bagels is a cream cheese stuffed bagel and started out being sold in brick and mortar shops in New York. The duo was looking to branch out and make the brand a nationwide success, but they needed the right shark to partner with. The pair were so clear and thoughtful about presenting their numbers and their vision that they were able to get a bite. 
Lori Grenier was the shark who won a deal with this awesome company and gave them $275,000 investment for 25% of the company. Now, Bantam bagels can be found in supermarkets everywhere. Tree Teepee When farmer Johnny Georges entered the tank with a product that would help other farmers everywhere, the sharks immediately felt the company would be a great investment. But it was Johnny's heart that had set him apart from other entrepreneurs. He told the sharks how his father had invented the tree teepee and how they used it together to save their crops. After his father passed away, Johnny vowed to get the tree teepee into the hands of every farmer. He was not concerned with making a profit, but instead wanted to only help his fellow farmers. Guest shark John Paul DeJoria ended up investing $150,000 for 20% equity in the company. After the show, Kevin O'Leary said that Johnny's pitch was one of the most powerful to ever be on Shark Tank. Simple Sugars Sometimes young investors enter the tank and knock it out of the park. This was the case with 18-year-old entrepreneur Lanny Lazari. Lanny brought in her idea for a skincare line called Simple Sugars and walked the sharks through the process. She leaned heavily on her desire to be a strong female entrepreneur, which won the hearts of several sharks. Lanny also had her figures in order and was able to walk the sharks through her plan as well as the role an investor would play in her vision. In the end, Lanny made a deal with Mark Cuban who offered $100,000 for a 33% stake in the company. Unikey Phil Dumas came to the tank to pitch his idea for a smartphone activated lock system. He explained how he came up with the idea and how he had been using his money to get the product going and why he needed, well, more money. He was extremely humble when the sharks asked questions and Phil took the time to listen to each shark thoughtfully while taking in everything that they said. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary ended up going in on a deal together, offering $250,000 for 20% of the company each. Cycloramic When Bruno Francois approaches the sharks with his hands-free video app Cycloramic, he presented them with a flawless pitch. He patented technology used iPhone's vibrations to move the camera in a circle to take beautiful panoramic photos and videos. All five sharks were interested in the company, but it ended up being Lori and Mark who snagged a deal for $500,000 for 15% equity. Because of its appearance on the show, the app soared to the top of Apple's top app list and scored 7 million downloads in the year following the episode. Kiss Ticks this pitch is probably one that is burned in your memory, as it had usually enemies Barbara Corcoran and Kevin O'Leary locking lips to test out the Kiss Ticks product. Chris Ticks founders Mike Bonomo and Dallas Robertson came in to pitch their product, a lip balm, well that's flavored and supposed to be used together to complement each other. You know, flavors like fire and ice, pina colada, strawberry daiquiri, and sweet and sour are all meant to be shared by, well, you know, kissing. When Barbara and Kevin smooched, they were both impressed with the product and the audience was left emotionally scarred. Mark Cuban ended up making a deal with the duo for $200,000 in exchange for 40% of the company. City Kitty When this next product was presented on Shark Tank, it seemed to be a bit of a joke. Rebecca Raskate pitched her idea for a cat toilet training product called City Kitty. By teaching cats to use the toilet instead of their litter boxes, Rebecca was hoping to help cat owners by reducing the need for litter. While she was met with a round of jokes from the sharks, I mean, come on, who won it? Rebecca was able to keep her sense of humor as she explained she had already made $225,000 in sales from the previous year. She was able to score a deal with Kevin Harrington for $100,000 in exchange for 20% of the company. Zip Swines one of the biggest deals in Shark Tank history went to Andrew McMurray and the company Zips Wines. The company, similar to another Shark Tank reject, Copa Divino, made Kevin O'Leary a little hesitant to like the product. Zips Wines is a single-serve wine product and as chief consultant, McMurray did a great job of building up the company and presenting all of the info to the sharks. He was able to negotiate in a cool and collected manner, eventually winning over his biggest critic Kevin, who made a deal with McMurray for $2.5 million in exchange for 10% equity. Breathometer The founders of Breathometer were the first entrepreneurs to ever get a deal with all five sharks. Their product was a smartphone-operated breathalyzer that would allow people to determine if it was safe for them to drive. 
The Sharks began fighting over who would get a deal with the company, when the founder, Charles Michael Yim, suggested that they all go in on a deal together. Some of the Sharks were reluctant, namely Mark Cuban, but eventually they all came around and Yim was offered a deal. Mark Cuban put up $500,000 for 15% equity, and each of the other Sharks would split 15% equity for $125,000 each. Now this story doesn't exactly have a happy ending though. After the show aired and the company began to grow, the breathometers were called out for being inaccurate and the Federal Trade Commission shut the company down. Breathometer had to refund the money spent to all of their customers. Scrub Daddy Now if you've never heard of the Scrub Daddy, then you must be living under a rock. The product might be the best known and best selling in Shark Tank history. Founder Aaron Krause took his product to the tank in season 4 and his pitch was so well received because of Aaron's confidence. He demonstrated the product by using the super strong yet gentle smiley face sponges. Lori ended up making a deal with Aaron, offering $200,000 for 20% of the company. After the show, Aaron said his pitch went so well because he had been practicing and editing it for months before appearing on the show. Today, the Scrub Daddy can be found in thousands of hardware stores, supermarkets, and specialty stores. Which deal would you have definitely gone in on? Have you ever tried any of the products that we mentioned? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.